everybody. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. Thank you so much for tuning in for today or tonight's episode. It is my honor and privilege to be able to come to you and to share with you on these podcast airways a message of hope that I believe will encourage you, will inspire you, it will empower you, and hopefully it will uplift you to understand how to live a full and meaningful life. I'm excited for what God is doing in this ministry. I'm excited to hear from you all the encouraging words, your prayers, your financial contributions, your support for this ministry. It it does not go unnoticed. And for all of the things that we have now connected with in terms of moving the needle, in terms of trying to provide a message of hope, we say to God be the glory for the great things he continues to do on a regular basis. It is God who set this whole thing called Full of Life Ministries up. It is God who has actually created this platform that we can actually connect with one another because we really do believe in one another. And I'm excited for what God is continuing to do on a regular basis. So let's get into to, into today or tonight's episode. And so let's get the name and the title out the way so we could get into this thing. Today or tonight's episode is entitled Understanding Friendships from God's Perspective. I want to say that one more time. Understanding Friendships from God's Perspective. And I want to go straight into a scripture that I believe ties in to this topic for tonight. It comes from Proverbs, the 27th chapter and the ninth verse. It says a sweet friendship refreshes the soul. A sweet friendship refreshes the soul. You have to understand and realize that friendships are a gift from God. It's a blessing to be able to enjoy great friends. (laughs) I mean, meaningful relationships, a treasure chest of precious memories that last a lifetime. You see, I believe the significance and the overall health of our existence has a lot to do with the building of these relationships. Because we have to realize and recognize that good friends and being A good friend has everything to do with demonstrating love that has been um, instilled in us by God. Yes, and while they are his blessing to us, the most blessed friendship we can have is with the Lord. And I want to stop and pause and just really focus on this, that the most important friendship that we all should have is with the Lord our God. You see, when we work on developing our relationship with the Lord, it is He who shows us how to love. It is He who demonstrates to us how to forgive, how to encourage and uplift our friends, how to inspire how to make sacrifices for somebody besides ourselves that we focus our entire attitude towards. It is he who helps us and shapes it, shapes us and molds us into an image where now the friendship between yourself and the other person becomes so beautiful and significant that no no enemy no no drama can separate you from having a solid friendship because i want you to remember these words that i'm about to say your friends and i'm i'm talking about your real friends and not your acquaintances should reflect the same character that God demonstrates to us. 
I want to say that one more time that your friends, your real, true, authentic friends, and I'm not speaking about your acquaintances, people that you know on the job, but your real, genuine friends that you now can trust should reflect the same character that God demonstrates to us. Because thinking through friendships is critical. It's vital. It's necessary because everybody can't be a true friend if they have a different reflection. (laughs) Would you agree with me on that? All right. So we should always, and I mean always, praise God for bringing friends into our lives. Because if we understand the importance of having relationships with others and with Christ, this would really bring satisfaction and value to your life because the reality of these friendships are God designed by God for us to live together in relationships because friendships are an important part of his plan for us because when we walk with him When we spend quality time with the Lord, when we shut off the television set, when we get our mind off of our phones, when we're not distracted, when we're able to walk and talk and pray with him, we'll become the kind of companion others desire. But sometimes we choose the wrong type of friend. (laughs) Can we admit that? Sometimes our choices are not always the wisest choice. And sometimes we recognize a little too late that the person that you chose to be your friend, you begin to see the warning signals that, wait a minute, why did I make that choice? Because we possibly may have been distracted or may not have actually asked God, is this the person that I need to be with? Have you prayed about it? Have you actually talked to God about some of your friends? That's why the scripture says in Proverbs 3 and 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. He will direct your paths. Simply put, he will direct you to have the right choice in terms of your friends. You see, God's word warns us of the associations that we should try to avoid. Now, when we talk about understanding friendships from God, God's perspective, One of the things that you need to recognize and realize if you meet somebody who demonstrates that gossip is part of having a relationship, these are the associations that we need to avoid. You see, Proverbs, the 11th chapter and the 13th verse talks about that. It says a slanderer walks around revealing secrets. But a trustworthy person keeps a confidence. (laughs) I want to read that scripture one more time. A slanderer walks around revealing secrets. But a trustworthy person keeps a confidence. Gossip is something that when it actually goes outside of the realm of your friendship actually tears and hurts individuals because they are slanderers when it comes to information that should not be distributed to somebody else's ears. When you take something that's personal and you go and you gossip to somebody else, you are considered a slanderer because you revealed a secret 
that most friends would never indulge. But you decided to become weak and you shared something that was something that was that potentially could be de- uh, destructive to the relationship. But I love the last pers- uh, last part of this verse. It says, but a trustworthy, trustworthy person keeps a confidence. How many of your friends that you can really trust, that you have total confidence in? This is something from God's perspective he wants you to be aware of. When you hear a person, a friend, a true friend, gossips all the time, you should be careful That should be a warning signal to you that maybe you should disassociate yourself from that so-called friend. Proverbs, the 16th chapter and the 28th verse tells us destructive people produce conflict. Gossip alienates close friends. There it is. Destruction. Conflict. And now it attacks the friendship. It breaks the friendship down, the trust. This, these are the things that we have to understand. Slanderers who reveal secrets, people who are destructive when they produce conflict, gossip, Revealing secrets alienates close friends. Close friends are something that came from God. And so, again, are these individuals a reflection of the character of God? Or or are they different from that reflection? These are the things that we have to understand from God's perspective. Now, there's another scripture in Proverbs, the 26th chapter, verses 20 through 22. And it says, without wood, a fire goes out. Without gossip, conflict calms down. Like adding charcoal to embers or wood to fire, quarrelsome people Kindle strife. The words of gossip are like choice snacks. <laughs> they go down to the innermost parts. Oh, that's a great scripture. If you take out the gossip, it calms the flames of destruction. Think about it like that. Without gossip, without kindling a fire that is a destructive fire. But when you decide not to share private information, secrets, it calms the storms of of the issue at hand. The words of gossip are like choice snacks. See, gossip really stimulates us when we can begin to kind of share private secrets because we think that because we're on our cell phones and no one, nobody else knows about what, what I'm saying to that about that individual. They are very tasty snacks because gossip fuels the cravings that we have as individuals. And those cravings are not always good for us. When you crave something that's not really good for your soul and you begin to just make that part of your life, all of a sudden now you have yourself or the other person. Now they are in danger of becoming harmed by these choices that you make or your friend, so-called friend makes. So let's understand real friendships from God's perspective is that we do not create fires. We don't talk about people. We encourage people. We 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 
kill the flames from ever happening because we suffocate it by demonstrating love and kindness and tender mercies towards one another. Another thing that we have to understand and realize that understanding friendships from God's perspective is understanding when someone is given to anger, how they handle the anger. Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, verses 24 and 25, it says, don't befriend people controlled by anger. Don't associate with hot tempered people. Otherwise, you will learn their ways and become trapped. <laughs> I want to see that say that scripture one more time. Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, verses 24 and 25 says, it says, don't befriend people controlled by anger. Some people have anger issues. Now, there's one thing when you have anger issues that you're trying to get help. But when you live your life always in attack mode towards people, when you attack your friend, when you attack others, this is an indicator that something is wrong. And it says, don't befriend people controlled by anger. Don't associate with hot tempered people. That's why some of the relationships that we're in, that we realize that when we see somebody who's angry, it's one thing to be angry because the Bible talks about be angry, but sin not. I believe that I believe that's uh, Ephesians chapter four, verse 26. Be you could be upset, you could be disturbed, you can be concerned, but don't sin. Don't allow the anger to overtake you. But hot tempered people, when they just lash out and really don't have any conscience of their actions. We saw that on the television with Will Smith. And Chris Rock. And now look what happened from that ordeal. Look of how it affected Will Smith. How it affected Chris Rock. Even uh, Miss Pinkett. All of this happened for the world to see. Being hot tempered is not good. And one of the things that you can learn, because in scripture in verse 25, it says, otherwise you will learn their ways and become trapped. These are the things that we have to really understand from God's perspective, that friendships are from him and it should reflect the character of God. When we be when we begin to understand and realize that God has given us this great gift and that demonstrating love in all areas of our life, when we have self-control as Galatians, the fifth chapter talks about one of the gifts is having self-control to be able to control yourself and to be able to be smart enough and wise enough to be able to handle situations when you are angry. So being a good friend or having a friend that's good to you is one who reflects the character of God and they're not given over to anger. Then you have the self-indulgent person. Now, God talks about from his perspective that we should never be self-indulgent. And that simply means excessive or unrestrained, you know, simply tries to provide gratification for your own appetite, your own desire, your own, your own whims. Now, Matthew, the 23rd chapter and the 25th verse says, how terrible it will be for you, legal experts and Pharisees. Hypocrites, you clean the outside of the cup and plate, but inside they are full of violence and pleasure seeking. <laughs> These legal experts and Pharisees, Jesus calls them out 
because they look good on the outside. But their selfishness, their being self-indulgent with no restraint, only to seek self-gratification because their desire is they want to shine and they did not care about anybody or anyone but themselves. God is saying from his perspective that friends who are not willing to really make changes in their life. These are the people that you should not associate with. But maybe this is you. Maybe you are self-indulgent. Maybe you have these appetites, these desires or whims to just to be selfish and greedy and, and um, you're just wanting to not care about anybody else but yourself. You want to look good on the outside. You're dressed up. You look very nice. You're very handsome. You're very pretty. But your innermost parts are full of violence, pleasure seeking, only thinking about yourself. God is saying, make sure that you're not that type of person and make sure that that um, that you do not surround yourself with people like that there's the there's people who are immoral that they that they're consciously they go against accepted morals that's what this is all about you know they have these beliefs about how to behave in a way that is considered right and good by the majority of people So morality is critical in terms of understanding from God's perspective. Are these the type of people that you want to hang out with? Or do you understand that God has a better way for you to to really receive this gift that he has provided for you? Romans, the 13th chapter, the 13th and 14th verse tells us this. It says, let's behave appropriately as people who live in the day, not in partying or getting drunk, not in sleeping around and obscene behavior, not in fighting and obsession. Instead, dress yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and don't plan to indulge your selfish desires. I want to read that verse one more time because it's very, very good. It tells us that we should behave appropriately as people who live in the day, not in partying and getting drunk. Think about all of the parties that you've been to and how the behaviors are so excessive because everybody wants to be seen at a party. And you want to drink the most because you believe that you can drink more than anybody else just to be accepted just to feel validated that you are important, that you have value. People who sleep around, their obscene, their obscene behavior, fighting, obsession. These are the individuals that we need to avoid. And this is what God is saying from his perspective. But it goes on to say, maybe this is how you are. Maybe this is how you treat your friends. God is saying today in verse 14 in Romans chapter 13, he says, dress yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and don't plan to indulge your selfish desires. When you change your clothes, when you put on the right wardrobe to reflect the image of Jesus, now you can actually give to your friends exactly what they need and you can encourage your friends that this is how they need to live their life dressed in the image of Jesus Christ another thing from God's perspective concerning friendships you don't need to be hanging around fools (laughs) fools people to God people who are just out of control they just have no 
kind of sense. <laughs> Fools. Proverbs 14th chapter and the 16th verse tells us, The wise are careful and avoid evil, but fools become excited and overconfident. <laughs> the wise are careful and avoid evil. See, this is what, from God's perspective, how we should really be having a spirit of discernment to be able to recognize and realize when you see something that's about to happen, you need to avoid it. To be careful with your words, with your actions, with your deeds. You have to avoid it with the grace that God provides for his people to avoid any kind of skirmishes because you feel like you have to demonstrate to another person who you are. No, there's a way and a grace that that people who reflect the image of God, they carry themselves in such a way that it actually has a reflection of strength because they don't get caught up with word games. I'm going to cuss you out. I'm going to say this about you. I'm going to talk about you like a dog. I'm going to demonstrate with my words how I can inflict damage to your heart, to your mind. And God is simply saying we have to avoid these types of behaviors, that we need to avoid evil. Because those who act that way, who tends to want to cuss everybody out, that wants to really um, create this fear against somebody else, they become so excited. They allow the anger to just rule their life. They become overconfident. And this is the type of thing that God is saying, please, if you're like this, don't be this way. God has a better way. Because great friendships don't just happen. They have to be built and nurtured. How can you really nurture a relationship if you're a fool, if you're immoral, if you're self-indulgent, if you're given to anger? How? How can you develop and nurture a friendship when you're so full of yourself? If we truly love and care for our friends, we will invest our time and energy in the relationship by spending quality time and talking in the way that can be beneficial to both. You can cry and laugh together. You can share accomplishments and, and the trials that you're going through, the difficulties that's happening on the job, some of the things that's, that, you, that you deal with in your home with your children or your wife or your, or your, um, your parents, grandparents. These are the things that how you can make bond, a, a strong bond with your friends to be thankful and thoughtful towards one another to show tolerance. You know, tolerance is something that a lot of us in terms of friendships, we don't always embrace. But to t but to embrace tolerance in a way where you're not saying about being taken advantage of. But knowing that a person may be struggling in a certain area within themselves that you can show a tolerance, a, a grace to be able to help those who have struggles within their own personal life. Uh, to be transparent with your friends, to be truthful. See, the Bible says the truth will set you free. But oftentimes we are guarded with the truth or we make up lies because we want to inflate ourselves. God is simply saying, be truthful with your friends. Because when you're truthful with your friends, you, you reflect the image and the character of God. Friendships in for a variety of reasons. Sometimes this is the result of circumstances. But there are some behaviors that may damage the relationship. Things like selfishness and manipulation, possessiveness, jealousy, criticism, explosive anger, covetousness, disloyalty, dishonesty, 
busyness. But God has given us a solution how to rescue a tr troubled friendship. If you have a friendship or a relationship that's, that is in trouble, you must first decide whether that friendship is worth rescuing and if you are willing to take the necessary steps to make it right. So the key to all of this is admit if you're wrong, just say you're wrong. Just, just admit it. Just be transparent and realize that by admitting that you're wrong shows that you are really strong and not weak. Proverbs 28 and 13 tells us those who hide their sins won't succeed, but those who confess and give them up will receive mercy. Another thing to to rescue a troubled friendship is that you will commit to change, that you will make a concerted effort to change your behavior. First Peter 2 verse 12 tells us it says live honorably among unbelievers. Today they defame you as if you were doing evil. But in the day when God visits the, to judge, they will glorify him because they have observed his honorable deeds and your honorable deeds. So commit to change. Admit that you're wrong and don't defend yourself for the sake of winning an argument. That's why friendships become strained or relationships become strained or actually separate and sever is because you're so competitive in trying to win an argument. God is simply saying that it's up to you to heal the relationship. It's up to you to make the concerted effort to help those who really need, especially your friends, that they need healing for the situation that you're dealing with. Ephesians 4 and 32 tells us, it says to be kind, compassionate, and forgiving to each other in the same way God forgave you in Christ. So you have to understand people of God. There is power from God's perspective of friendships, but you have to admit your wrongdoing you have to commit to changing the situation. If you're wrong, just admit it. You don't have to win every argument. But how you actually heal a relationship is to be kind and compassionate and forgiving to one another. And lastly, please, when we're talking about understanding friendship from God's perspective, always listen to your friend's side. Be open to hearing what they're saying. James 1 and I believe 19 talks about it says to be quick to hear, slow to speak. Because it's so critical that you listen with your ears and listen to their heart because they're speaking from a perspective of where, how they see the situation. It doesn't mean that they're right. It just means that they're speaking from their heart because they really want reconciliation. So listen first before you speak. And when you speak, have self-control to be wise, to be wise with your words. Because the Bible says in Proverbs, it says life and death are in the power of the tongue. So how you speak, how you respond to what your friend is saying is critical for making sure that this friendship lasts a lifetime. And so in closing, our friendships are treasures from the Lord for which we should be truly grateful. So it's important to understand that God created relationships to enhance your ability to love, to encourage and uplift those closest to you. Jesus told his disciples, I call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I've called you friends for all things that I've heard of my father. I have made known unto you. So today or tonight, start thinking over some of the relationships you are, you have right now. Just take a moment to really analyze 
your relationships with your friendships and then allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you how you are with your friends and how your friends are to you. Because the critical thing is what you do for Christ will last. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this episode. I thank you for all of your many blessings. The episode entitled Understanding Friendships from Your Perspective. Lord God, we appreciate this gift that you have given us called friends. We thank you for calling us your friend. We appreciate all that you do on a daily basis. So I pray for every person under the sound of my voice that they will recognize that in you holds the key to having strong and healthy relationships with our friends. Bless us, forgive us for all of the sins that we've committed against you because ultimately we want to develop a strong relationship with you because you will teach us how to love, how to forgive, how to sacrifice, how to have tolerance, how to give, how to just sacrifice love, how to cover a multitude of sins. You will teach us because we will develop such a strong relationship with you that we'll know how to be a good friend to our friends. I pray, oh God, that the people who listen to this episode will in fact be a doer of your word and not just hearing this episode that they will apply these teachings to their everyday life. I pray that you will continue to provide for them, whether it's financial, whether it's emotional, whether it's mental, whether it's spiritual, whatever the need is, I know that you will meet every single need because you are God and God alone. And we thank you and we praise you for all that you do. And we ask all these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, people of God, that is it for today or tonight. The episode entitled, oh, what is the title? Understanding Friendships from God's Perspective. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. I hope and pray that today or tonight's episode has encouraged you to keep on keeping on during these difficult times. God has some great plans in store for all of us. People of God, listen, if there's anything, anything that we can do to help you along your Christian journey, don't hesitate to email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. Once again, fulloflifesd at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Instagram. Please reach out to us. Let us know uh, if there's anything that we could do to help you along your Christian journey. Pray for us. Just send out an encouraging word. Whatever it is, we will appreciate anything that you send to us. And also, as always, please send your financial contributions to Full of Life Ministries. Whatever it is, whether it's $10, $20, whatever the amount is, $50, $100, $1,000, whatever the Lord has placed on your heart to sow into this ministry, we will be grateful to the Lord for whatever contributions that you give. We appreciate your love. We appreciate your thoughts and we appreciate you. So again, people of God, thank you so much for tuning in on a regular basis. We are growing. We are expanding and it's all because of you. If you like what you heard, please share these episodes with your friends and your family. Let them know about Full of Life Ministries. I just wanted to say this before I leave. Love you with the love of Christ. See you next time. And people of God, let's continue to do this. In Jesus' name, God bless.